This is the cheapest 4K projector on the market, or at least the cheapest that I know of. This is by a company called Paris Roan. And right now this thing retails for around $500. So the first thing I wanted to do obviously is hook this up and see if it actually is a 4K projector. Oh, there it is. It is actually a 4K projector and it is receiving the 4K signal. So with that in mind, I guess we got to do the full review. Let's get started. Paris Roan is a 4K LCD projector. It does have two HDMI inputs as well as two USB inputs and a USB-C input. And when you turn this on, you're going to be greeted with a version of Android 9.0. Now from here, you can actually utilize your projector and you can hook this up either with ethernet cable or via Wi-Fi. And although this is considered Android 9.0, when I was using it, I didn't find all of the apps that I would expect on an Android. So this does appear to be a custom version and it might be a little bit of app limitations to it. First thing that I did notice is the projector is a little bit slow to respond. It does seem to operate relatively slowly. Now from there, I did turn on the settings and there are a lot of really great settings such as auto focus, auto keystone. It even has object avoidance and all those you can turn on. Just a word to the wise, when you do turn those on, it does require the projector to restart, which it will automatically restart. What I did find interesting though, is that there were no settings for audio or video. Uh, minus just the brightness setting. And so in the beginning, I didn't know if there were actually any video or audio adjustments, which would have been a little bit disappointing. But already at this point in time, I could tell you that I would recommend using an external device if you want to get full app support, something like the Nvidia Shield or a Roku. Next thing I wanted to do is hook up my laptop and do some video testing to see exactly what this projector has to offer. Once I plug the HDMI in, it asks right away if I wanted to switch to the HDMI input, just click OK on the remote control and it'll switch right over. I really like that. When I switched over to the HDMI input, I accidentally pressed the menu button on the IR remote control. And when I did that, it pulled up both video and audio settings. Now, this is where things get really interesting because I can make some video and audio adjustments and that does appear to go over onto the Android side, but there still seems to be no way to adjust those on the Android side of things. So you do need to make those adjustments on one of your external inputs. So once I realized that I could actually change the settings on this, I did a calibration on it. And this is what I found out. And some of the results were actually relatively surprising. But for those who don't know what we're looking at, we're gonna be looking at the Delta Air. Anything below three is imperceivable to the eye. And anything above 10 is something that most people can notice pretty easily. With a budget projector, we're trying to stay under 10. And what I found to be pretty interesting is the skin tones, for example, after calibration, we're at 6.6. .6, and before calibration, they're actually an acceptable 8.3. Now, if we continue that, the color was the same way, 8.2 and before 9.3. And even the saturations were at 8.5 and 9.4. So this particular projector is relatively color accurate for a budget projector. And that's pretty nice. However, that doesn't tell you all of the story. One of the places where this is definitely not color accurate is the whites. If we take a look at the whites, we're going to see that there is way too much blue and green in there and just not enough red. We're well over 100% on the blues and the greens and well under on the reds. Now, what that equates to is we're usually looking for 6,500 white balance. And unfortunately, with this particular white, we're looking at closer to a 10,000 on most of the scale. This means that your whites will have a blue tint to it and there is nothing that you can do to calibrate that out. Now, finally, I want to talk about the gamma. The gamma, if you take a look at it, looks like it's really hitting hard on the high end. Well, that's going to be your 70, 80 and 90 percentile. And that means that we're going to get some really bad clipping in the white areas. Now, after calibration, it wasn't nearly as bad. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like actually on the projector with this scene from the Meg. We're gonna go through the different video presets and take a look at them. And we're gonna pay attention to the sky up here. 
And as you can see, you're starting to see a little bit of cloud separation here. But as we go to like vivid, there is no cloud separation. It is extremely clipped where we see no clouds at all, actually. And then when we go to the user setting, we're actually going to see now that we get a lot more delineation. And that's because when we calibrated it, we were able to get some of that clipping on the high end down. Now, before I go on to more of the testing, I want to talk about this because a lot of people equate 4K and HDR together. In fact, this actually says that it does HDR 10 plus. That's not what I found in my testing. When I did my testing, I only got a color gamut of 68% of Rec. 709, which is not HDR, that's SDR. And that's actually the second lowest that I've ever tested out of all of my projectors that I've tested. Now I did reach out to Paris Roan and ask them what was going on and, you know, because they're advertising HDR10 and they said it depends on how I test it. Now I'm not really sure what they mean by that because when you test the colors, you test the colors, but I went ahead and put on some 4K HDR content and sure enough, I did not get any new settings that showed up as HDR and I was not getting any more colors. So as far as I can tell with the testing that I did, this is an SDR projector that does about 68% of Rec. 709, and it is not an HDR10 projector. It is, however, 4K. Now, another thing that we want to talk about is shadow detail, because that's something that some projectors struggle with. And once again, when we started playing something like Maverick here, and we play this scene, we're going to see that we lose a lot of shadow detail. A lot of the blacks and grays just kind of merge together in this scene. And unfortunately, that was something that showed itself quite often in deep and dark scenes. So definitely doesn't have the greatest shadow detail. Now, where this did really do a great job was with animated movies. And no matter what animated movie I put on, I got a lot of really great pictures out of it. And I would say that this is where this projector really thrives and I really enjoyed using it in this manner. Now I did mention that there were sound settings as well. Now this is interesting because the sound settings once again you have to go to HDMI 1 or whatever input to adjust those but this is really interesting and I like what they did here because they basically made it an equalizer and you can change different frequencies up or down depending on what you like the sound. And the other things that I appreciate is that they did actually true stereo sound. So they do have a speaker on both the left and right hand side, which makes it a lot better for people sitting on the right or left that might be listening to these speakers. And I did notice on Android operating system, it was relatively loud. In fact, it was really loud. Now, when I switched over to HDMI 1 on some of the apps, it was not as loud, but I do think that was more to do with the apps than the actual projector itself. Now, don't think you're gonna get this amazing sound quality out of it. You're not, it does get relatively loud, but that's really about it. It doesn't have the deep, low bass or anything. I would equate this more to a television type sound than like a sound bar sound. And one thing I really wanna note is the fan noise. This thing is extremely loud. And it's interesting because it looks like there should be a lot of cooling on the outside and maybe there is. And that's why it's so loud because those fans run a hundred percent all the time in my testing. And that was definitely distracting and noticeable. It was one of the louder projectors that I have tested. Now we got to decide where to place this particular projector on our projector list. Now, since this projector is right now at $500, I'm going to go ahead and place it in the under $600 category. And I think there could be an argument that could say that this could be number one. For example, if you care a lot about pixel count and you watch a lot of bright, vibrant movies on it, then, you know, maybe this would be number one for you. But for me, the lack of colors and really no HDR with that 4K, I'm going to have to put this down further. And I could I could see someone putting it above the MOGO 2 because MOGO 2 is only a 720p projector. But I'm going to go below the MOGO 2. And I think I'm going to put it, yeah, I'm going to put it above the Ultimia just because it's a 4K projector. Although I, I would not... If you're really looking for a budget projector, I'd probably go Ultimia over it, but somewhere in this range is where I'm going to put it. I want to know where you would put it. Would you put it somewhere else? If so, tell me, because I really want to know. All right, guys, this is Toy Studio Audio, and I'm out.